Hi, everyone, um, and welcome to this webinar about the University of Southern Denmark. Um, I'm going to have some different slides for you. Um, we're primarily looking at the uh, bachelor programs. However, I will also tell you something about the master programs and also how to apply for a PhD if that is what you're interested in. Um, so yeah, first of all, this is a picture of um, our campus in Sonnabel, which is our most international campus uh, with approximately almost 60% international students, but I will tell you a bit more about that in a minute. So who am I? My name's Sina. I'm uh, 27 years old from Denmark. Um, we, or I studied um, a master. I just finished a couple of years ago in 2018, a master in international, uh, international politics. And I graduated high school back in 2012. So it's not that long ago. Right now I'm working as an international officer at um, the University of Southern Denmark, um, recruitment primarily for our engineering programs. And I'm located in Sunnabal, uh, yeah, which is also where the night's nice picture and the side is taken. If you have any questions, um, I will look at them at the end after the presentation and we can go through them. So Denmark, I don't know how many of you have ever been to Denmark. Um, if you know, if you have, you know, it's a bit colder than, uh, than Turkey. So yeah, it's a bit further north at least. So this is a map of Denmark. We are the campus where I work at and where most of our study programs um, are found is in the south of Denmark. So yeah, in the lower part of the screen in Sunnabon. There are some different famous brands in Denmark. Some of most of you probably already know Lego. Then there's Danfoss, Echo, which is shoes, um, Arla with milk and cheese and stuff like that. Um, and famous Danes. Of course, you probably know the Queen. Then we have um, Nikolai Kostovala, who was in not Lord of the Rings, um, Game of Thrones, football players and stuff like that. Uh, Denmark is very flat, um, have a lot of water. It's, uh, I do believe it's quite a beautiful setting that you'll be studying if, if, in if you choose to study uh, at our university. So before you start studying, if you are still in high school, you have a lot of questions that you want to answer, that you're thinking about, like, do you even want to study? Um, what direction do you want to study? Do you want to study domestically or abroad? Should it be in English or is that too challenging? Um, and all of those questions. Uh, I myself also had to go through those questions. I decided to study in Denmark, but I did study in English, at least for my master. And I also did go abroad to Germany for a year and a half. So. The University of Southern Denmark, we have six campuses. One is only for research facility, that's the one in Copenhagen. Uh, we have approximately 32,000 students divided on the different campuses. The one in Owen, so in the middle of the, the map, is our main campus. All in all, we have approximately 20% international students. Um, but yes, that is, um, that's not, how it is at our campus, we have approximately 60% international students. So, as I said, in Sonnabal, we have more than 50% international students. We are approximately at 60. From all over the world, we have students from all of Europe, we have students from Turkey, we have students from Iran, we have students from China, Barbados, India, uh, Canada, you name it, Mexico. Uh, all the continents. Uh, we also do work a lot together with local businesses where you can have matchmaking events, events to find a part-time job, you can uh, do an internship, you can do assignments with the local companies, um, but these lo local companies aren't necessarily small. It would also be stuff like Lego or Danfoss, which have massive international um, reach so and it's a very modern campus it's uh close to the water i don't know if you can see it but behind me you can see the water it's a waterfront 
um, so it's it's a beautiful setting to study in and work in. Very modern. Here are a few pictures of our campus. Um, this is actually the red box is where I'm sitting right now. Uh, in the bottom, there's our cafeteria where you can eat your lunch package or buy some food if you want fresh food and don't want to prepare it yourself. The prices are rel relatively cheap, so they are stu student friendly, I'd say. Um, yeah, some more. We have trees indoor, which is also actually making a, a nice, cozy environment for everyone. Um, we have a concert hall and yeah, Foskapagen is translated into English, um, a research park where companies also are located, have some offices, and we also do have some communication with those. Again, waterfront right in front of the campus. And this is one of our labs. And this is also one of our labs. It's called our innovation lab. So in this red globe that you can see in the middle, we actually do sometimes have teaching um, projects that we show. We can, you can also use this facility to actually meet up with companies if you want to do a startup. So if you are interested in starting up your own business, we also do help with that if you study at our university, of course. But yeah, group projects is very important with us and you get to put post-its on the windows, get to write on the windows if you want to. Um, so it's pretty free and relaxed environment as well. Um, yeah, study. So I don't know how many of you already know about the setup of studies. Um, so the bachelor is either three years or three and a half years, depending if you want a bachelor of science or arts or something like that, or if you want a bachelor of engineering where you can go and work afterwards. You can also do that with a regular bachelor, but in the Bachelor of Engineering, there is another semester that's fixed on, uh, what's it called, internship. So you have a forced internship where you get some really good insight in how it, how it is to work in real life. Then there is a master, two years, where you get a bit more specified on your study program, uh, the bachelor is a bit more broad. And then if you want to, you can do a PhD at the end. Not that many people do that, but it is an option. In Denmark, the PhDs are more of a vacancy, so it's a job. You would have to, if you want to apply for uh, a PhD, you would have to go in um, and look for free positions at our website. And then you would get paid for doing your PhD as if it's a regular regular job. You will have to do your research and you'd also have to either do some supervision for bachelor and master students or do some teaching. So you'd have to, to work pretty much at the university as well. Um, yeah, these are English taught programs that we have on all of um, all of our bachelor programs, of course that we have in all of F SDU. They are all taught in English. Uh, and these are the ones that are located in Sonabo. So we have electronics engineering. We have engineering innovation and business, which is more of a business engineer. Megatronics, and then we have humanities. We have one, which is a cooperation with Germany. So if you want to study international business administration, modern languages, you would have to study three days in, in Flensburg in Germany and two days in Denmark, so Nabot, and there is a shuttle bus going back and forth. However, you would have to either know Danish or German already to study this program. The people who know German learn Danish while studying and the people who know Danish learn German while studying. Um, and the other two in business and social science located in Sonabo is international business um, administration. So. Now it's actually called International Business Relationships instead, but it's, it's still the same program. It's about um, international business law. It's about finance, accounting, how to pretty much take a small local business into a big international business, but also how to start up your own. Uh, and then there is European Studies, which is international politics, 
which is pretty much what I studied for my master. So yeah, but I am from the Faculty of Engineering, which is why that is what I'm going to talk to you about mostly. So our programs here in Sonabor, as I said, electronics, engineering, innovation and business, megatronics, and from 2021, next summer, we will start up a mechanics study program. So that's new. Um, for the other ones, I will have some more information, but since the mechanics is still being put together, I unfortunately can't tell you that much about it, but yes. So engineering in general at our university, you will be working in smaller personal groups. In general, the classes aren't that big, which is also good in a post-corona uh, environment. So you won't have to be scared of going into class with more than two, three, four hundred people. Um, it's only 30, 40 people in a classroom, kind of like in high school. So you will, will really get to know each other. And as I said, people are from all over the world. So you will get to know people in a different way than if you were studying in Turkey, where you most likely will know some in your class um, and then you will stick together. And if you don't know anyone, maybe the others will stick together. But here, everyone knows no one almost. So it's a good basis of getting to know a lot of people, um, which is, I think, pretty nice. Uh, so you don't, you don't have to be alone and you get into small groups who really get to know each other. And there are a lot of social activities as well, but we'll talk about those later. So yeah, also we have extremely nice technical facilities. Um, we just got a new building only with laboratories, um, group rooms that is for our students. So there are no offices over there. It's only a fun time pretty much. So our study programs are very much hands-on. You have to do projects every semester. Um, it's innovation-based learning. It's group work. It's um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, and of course, also inspiring projects with the industry. We have something called, in the fifth semester, we have something called uh, expert teams, where sometimes some of the, the companies come to us, have a problem, ask how they might change it or better it. And then our students come up with a solution to better this pro um, this product. And sometimes we have actually had companies buy what the, the solution that the um, students came up with. So it's a great opportunity to test your skills and really get to, to work with different kinds of people. Because it is in this setting, it will be larger groups and it's from different programs. So you will really have to, to test your patience, but also show what you can do. Yeah. So the three programs that already have their full structure are electronics, engineering and business, innovation and business and megatronics. Electronics is a bit more specific. Um, so it's very, yeah. Um, some would say nerdy, but it depends on your, where your enthusiastic uh, preferences lie. Um, electronics is mainly focusing on embedded systems, electronics software, uh, modeling and simulation, while megatronics is the mixture of electronics, mechanics and informatics. So it's, yeah, the mechanics and electronics, so you'll still have the software part, the modeling and simulation part, but not as much as electronics would have. Megatronics is often the people who look at the holistic parts of the device, let's say. Um, so if you want to build a robot, they know how to both build the entire mechanical parts, but also how to program them. And then there is engineering innovation and business, which has the engineering part from both megatronics and electronics, again, not as in depth as the other ones. Then they have the business part with business for or industry 4.0 um, and the innovation part where you also will have to work with 
virtual reality, AI, um, stuff like that. So it's it's pretty fun, all of these things, I'd say. At least the students also look as if they have a lot of fun. So again, um, I talked about the semester projects very briefly. As you can see here, there is uh, an example of one of the projects um, where you will have to develop an animal based machine that can climb a rope. I believe that's in third semester where you would sort of have to, yeah, in this case, it's, um, it's an iguana or lizard. Um, and they had to build some an animal that could climb up a rope. Now I think they changed it to a fence. Um, but yeah, you have to start with what kind of animal would be able to do that in real life. And then you have to do the development, the theoretical backgrounds of it. And then at the end, you would have to make the robot, build the robot, and also test it. It's teamwork and it's, um, yeah, still showing your skills. Um, and that's also part of the exam. So here are again, some more examples from different semesters. Uh, the EU United Uni Unity Cake is an example from first semester where they back in the day had to build something that moved to music. In this case, it was whenever the national anthem of, let's say, Italy, Denmark, um, the UK were playing, the little lights at the bottom of the cake would start lighting up. So you'd know what, which anthem was connected to which country and what flag. Then there is the uh, the one right next to it, that detective IF is from thir third semester. Um, and it's actually a device that was developed for the police or security departments. So if an officer would were to draw the the weapon, it would send the holster would send a signal back to the department saying this officer needs help. Um, without him having to radio in, so there would become there would come reinforcements automatically um, because he was he drew, drew his weapon. Um, yeah, then of course there is a clay pitching launcher uh, that some people might know from the shooting range when you are trying to learn how to shoot, um, and also the the big picture is also from first semester where they had to make something that moved to music. So the woodpecker is going up and down and moving while music is uh, is playing and different lights are lighting up. So these are just some of the ideas that you can look at um, or some of the ideas that you can work with. There are many more um, things. There's also someone who developed a plant that if the environment indoor was bad, it would hang its head because it needed oxygen or it was, if it's too loud in a kindergarten, the lights would start flashing red. Um, so yeah, lots of ideas, just be innovative, be free, play with it a bit. Um, and it's actually the same with both bachelor and master programs. You still have in master programs, you still have the semester projects, it's going to be a bit more advanced because you, of course, know some more. Um, but yeah, you keep playing while studying at SDU, which is, I think, pretty cool. So yeah, as I said, fifth semester, you could do expert and teams, which is on campus. Uh, but you can also do either an exchange or sometimes also uh, an internship. Exchange can be wherever you want. We have more than 500 partner universities worldwide. We have someone studying engineering going to Singapore, Canada, um, Malaysia, I believe. But yeah, we have partner universities in, again, every continent. So you just choose where you want to go, apply, and then you can go abroad twice, not just to Denmark, but also somewhere else. You can, of course, also, if you want to do a semester abroad in Turkey, if you want to go home for a semester and have some more quality time with family, friends, see them a bit more. Yeah, 
So entry requirements for the bachelor's, you would need a high school diploma, mathematics on high level, English on intermediate, uh, physics on, on intermediate, and also for electronics, mechatronics, you would have to have chemistry on intermediate, I believe. Um, if you go to the website and check these things out, there's going to be some information about Danish A level, Danish B level. It has nothing to do with the grade that you're getting. It has to do with how many hours. So Danish A level is what is called high level of mathematics, which means that you've had mathematics for three years in high school. Um, Danish B level is two years in high school. Danish C level is one year in high school. Um, so for mathematics, it would be approximately, let's see, 250 hours um, during your high school time. For English, you would have to also prove that you've passed the exam, of course, um, and you would also need either Cambridge IELTS or the TOEFL test. We do accept all of them. Um, yeah. And here are some pictures of Sonabo. It's a uh, it's a smaller city, only approximately thirty thousand inhabitants, located directly at the waterfront. And even though it's a small city, there's actually a lot of activities that you can do. There's a lot of water sports, of course. Um, there are a lot of cafes, nightlife if you want to go out. There are libraries. There's also um, a concert hall, both with comedy. Um, concerts but also if you're into opera or ballet but there's also of course um, escape rooms laser attack paintball in the area uh, bowling there is a student union uh, for not just the university but also for the other academies high schools or students in the area where they get together play games create activities. Uh, they had an escape room at the campus organized, which is also pretty cool because a lot of people knew the surroundings, but they still had a hard time getting out. Um, yeah, and then of course the campus also has a Friday bar, um, which is pretty typical for them, Mark, actually. So you'd, every high school or every yeah, every high school, every university, every academy in the Mark has a, a Friday bar where you can go after school Fridays, grab something to drink and then head home afterwards or stay for a party. It's all organized by students. So it's not something that the staff is at all um, included in. Or We love to come, of course, but we're not part of it. So it's your free space um, to just have fun, be yourself, meet other students. Yeah. Um, and also when you start at the university in Sonabo, there are some introductory days. So when you start, this is from last year, the dates. Uh, the semester starts the 1st of September, of course. There is an introduction team where you can also sign up if you want to help new students get to know each other get to feel welcomed so there are dorm races where we where the students bike from dorm to dorm say hi to each other uh, there's a weekend introduction tour or intro tour where you go somewhere over the weekend with it, all of the new students and the intro team um, have some activities sometimes there's a concert as well and yeah just have fun, relax, get to know each other pretty much. Also, there's an intro party and there's also a pop crawl in the city of Sonabo. These are all voluntarily, so you don't have to go if that's not for you, but I do recommend them. So, when it comes to housing, we do have accommodation guaranteed if you apply before the 1st of May, the year that you want to start your study program. The housing is the dormitories and you can actually choose whether you'd like to have your own apartment in one of the dormitories, if you would like to have a shared apartment with someone. Of course, you always have your own bedroom, so you have your own private space where you can go in, close the door and just 
be yourself. Um, the last option is having your own bathroom, bedroom, apartment kind of, and then sharing the kitchen with some other apartments like that. The prices are approximately 260 to 400 euros a month, depending on what solution you want to go for. Also, if you do have a boyfriend, girlfriend, some kind of partner, it is possible to also sign up for these dormitories if you want to bring your partner. As long as one of you are studying at the university or is studying in Sunnabar, you can sign up for these apartments and you're guaranteed one. Again, if you apply before the 1st of May, the year you want to start your study program. So when coming to Denmark, there are some stuff that you would uh, you'd need to know. especially concerning insurance and financing. So when you come to Denmark, you would need a social security number. That's what we call CPR number. With this number, you can go to the, um, the doctors for free. You get all your mail online from the, the government, from doctors, from taxation offices. Um, pretty much everything. Uh, your social security number will then be on a little yellow card that you get, which is your health card and insurance. So if you are in an accident, you break a leg or something like that, um, need a blood transfusion, I do not know. It sounds dramatic, but unfortunately it can happen. Um, you would be put in the hospital and all of this would be for free. You don't have to think about that. Now, financing your study program. Um, the prices for the bachelor is, depending on if you want a bachelor of engineering, which is three and a half years, or bachelor of science, uh, which is three years, the prices vary a bit. For engineering, the prices of um, bachelor of engineering is per semester, 5,350 euros, again, per semester. For the Bachelor of Science, the three-year program, and also the Master, the prices are 6,950 euros per semester. So it's it's cheaper than if you want to go to the UK. It's also cheaper than the Netherlands or Belgium, Germany most often as well, um, and Sweden, Norway. But it's, it's still pricey, especially for Danish students. Um, we do believe that it's kind of pricey to adults pay for our study programs. Um, but yeah, it's not that expensive if you consider the, uh, the other countries, if you want to study abroad. Um, but also what is important to know is that if you want to study a master program, it is possible to get a full scholarship if you want to study the master of the master in mechatronics or master in electronics in Sunabo, you can get a full scholarship. You don't have to apply twice. When you apply for the master program itself, you also apply automatically for the scholarship. You will there, you would get, of course, a full scholarship plus 3,000 Danish crowns for living expenses. If this is not enough for you or you don't get the scholarship and you would need some money to earn your own money or you just want to earn money to have something to do, we do at the university have our own job portal with relevant jobs, um, with cleaning jobs, if that's what you want. If you want to, to work at a restaurant, um, if you want to walk a dog, um, it's all possible. As a non-EU citizen, you are allowed to work maximum 20 hours a week. The minimum wage in Denmark that you should accept, no matter what kind of job you take, is 13 and a half euros an hour. That's approximately 100, <clears throat> sorry, it's approximately 100 Danish crowns an hour. Do not accept anything less than that. It is not fair, to be honest. Um, and yeah, there are, as I said, SDU has its own, own job portal, but there are several other English um, spoken 
or speaking job portals out there that you can look into, which also do offer student jobs and part-time jobs. Um, at DSU, we also do have matchmaking events. If you would like a part-time job, um, but you want to have something that's guaranteed relevant for your study program. Um, so at these matchmaking events, business launches, the companies in the area come to SDU for an afternoon and then just talk with the students that come about their qualifications, what they'd like to work with and stuff like that. Yeah. And then the application deadline. So the deadlines on here is for the bachelor program. For the master program, the deadline is the 1st of February. Um, yeah. So that's, um, that's pretty much it uh, for the application deadline. The application also, you can use um, our agent in Turkey to apply. They will help you gather all of your um, your documents that you need to apply, your diploma. Um, when applying, you of course usually don't have your diploma yet, but that's not a problem. You can just send in the description of your courses, the curriculum, send in um, sort of a motivational letter, gather all of those things, your midterm exams, and then when you have your diploma at the end of your graduation, you send it in. You can still be accepted without having shown us your diploma. If we can see that your midterms exams, you've passed everything, your grades are pretty good, uh, then you can send in the diploma as soon as you have it and you would actually be accepted before you send in the diploma on the condition of passing the last of your exams. So yeah, as I said, semester start is the 1st of September with a lot of introductory events. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great time where you get to know everyone, see the facilities and just have fun. So yeah, if you want to know more about the SDU, uh, you're more than welcome to go to our website. Uh, you can send an email to the international advisor at SDU. You can go to our Facebook web website. Uh, we also do have an Instagram. I forgot to put that on here. But yeah, more than welcome to to contact us. Um, we would love to to hear from you, answer your questions, um, and I will get to the questions who've been that have been texted in the chat room in a minute. Um, yeah, so I hope to to see you in Sonabo at some point. Um, yeah. So let's see what kind of questions there are. Um, there unfortunately are no opportunities for scholarships on the um, bachelor programs, the undergrad programs. Unfortunately not. Um, we do not have that. Only for the master programs and only for the engineering programs. Um, Um, to the one who is finishing or has finished the program in software engineering, yes, you can apply for um, a master program at the SDU uh, and you can also apply for a PhD if you would rather do that. You have both options. You can still apply for scholarship even though you do have a master already. That's not a problem. Um, again, when applying for the master program, you automatically apply for the scholarship as well. Um, yeah. Um, what are requirements for IB diploma? So the IB diploma is, if you already have an IB diploma, you can actually apply just as everyone, everyone else. It's um, that's not at all an issue. You just apply. Uh, if you have, of course, the 
mathematics, chemistry, um, physics, the things that, that you need um, to apply. Um, So for sports teams, if I'm understanding this question right, um, with your son is, um, is in the national team of Turkey, uh, there unfortunately are no sports scholarships um, in Denmark or at least at our university. There is an option to play sports, of course, here. Um, and there is also an option to actually, if playing on the national team, there is an option to also take the program over a longer period so that he can still pursue the sports. Sorry, I have to get some water. Um, yeah. So the industrial engineering question, we do have a center of industrial electronics, um, which is also located here in Sonabo, um, which is actually the, the, the new building that we have. It's actually mainly for those. Um, it's very nice facilities. Um, so yeah, we do, we do have industrial engineering, not as, um, let's say, construction buildings or something like that. We don't have that in English, unfortunately, but also our engineering innovation and business or yeah, engineering innovation business also do work with industry 4.0. So they would also work with um, in, yeah, industrial engineering. Um, I am not sure what is meant with the A-level requirements. Would you, maybe elaborate on that in, in a minute, then I can, can look at it and uh, and hopefully answer it. Um, so can international students find part-time jobs easily? It depends. It is, of course, easier to find a part-time job that's relevant for your study program if you study, um, if you speak Danish. Um, however, if you are studying for a ma or looking for a master program, you already have a lot of experience in the field. You already know a lot, uh, so it's it's easier to get a, a part time job in in a relevant field. Um, as if you're willing to work with whatever as a dishwasher in a restaurant or cleaning I don't know where you can still get a part-time job pretty easily that's not an issue so it, it depends on what you're willing to do but yeah a lot of people especially in Sonabo um, don't mind that you don't speak Danish at the at the moment that you um, get to Denmark so it's it's not an issue um, also in Denmark Almost everyone knows uh, knows English, or even the older generation. So it's it's not an issue. Um, it is also an option to learn Danish if you want to for free. Actually, um, you just have to sign up and then you go. You, you're good to go. Um, yeah. All right from English teaching school in Turkey. Still is. Yes, you would need to prove your English, even though you studied English, or yeah, you studied English um, in Turkey, unfortunately. Um, if you don't want to pay for these tests and, you, and your full study program was in English, um, I would recommend you to send an email to our um, admissions office. The email is just admission at sdu.dk. They can answer all your questions uh, a bit better than I can with the application process and, and what you need. 
Um, but I unfortunately am almost 100% sure that you would still have to prove your English levels. Um, what must be our IELTS score to apply for a postgrad? So, um, the IELTS score is supposed to be, what's it called? At the level of C1. Um, I believe that's IELTS score as well. Otherwise, you can find much more information about that on the website. Um, yeah, I will. I'm gonna be a bit quick with these uh, questions because I only have five minutes left. So I'm gonna. I want to try and answer everything that I can. Um, yes, the Turkish high school diplomas are accepted directly. Um, you don't have to transform them into something else. Um, you would, however, need a, an English version if possible. Uh, since we do not have translators that can can do that for us um, yet. So the requirements for the Master of Electronics um, is pretty much that you have a, a bachelor that is relevant in regards to the program. So you need a bachelor in either mechatronics, electronics, uh, software, um, informatics engineer, something that is leading up to electronics. Um, again, with the requirements, admission at stu.dk knows much more about the details. Um, yeah, so I recommend texting them, sending them an email. They are relatively quick to answer. If not, you're welcome to send me an email and I will sort of try and pull an answer out of them. Um, my email address is Sina, so my first name at tek.stu.dk. Um, I believe you can see also see my email somewhere. Um, so yeah, you're welcome to send me an email if you have any further questions that I did not have the time to answer or I did not answer fully. Um, I want to do a master in environmental and resource management. I was wondering how it costs a year. So the environmental and research management is the um, social science program, if I do remember correctly. Those fees are a bit different. Um, accommodation fees are still the same. Living expenses, all of that is still the same. The tuition fees are, I believe, a tiny bit higher but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you can find them on the website. Just put in sdu.dk slash en for English and then Google or search for tuition fees. You will find it for every uh, faculty. So, um, but yeah, living expenses in general in Denmark is approximately 300, two to 300 euros um, a month for food, clothes, drinks, going out, having fun. That's it. more you don't really need, especially in these parts. I mean, it's not Copenhagen. Copenhagen is a whole other story. That's expensive, but not, not here. Um, so what kind of programs do we have? Chemical engineering. We do have a chemical engineering in master but not on a bachelor level, unfortunately. So if you're looking for, for a bachelor, you'd have to do that somewhere else, but you can still apply for the master in Denmark. Actually, the thing is with our master programs and also bachelor programs, they're internationally, um, what's it say, internationally accepted. So if you want to do a bachelor here, you can still do a master elsewhere and also the other way around. Um, Sports scholarships, again, we do not have that. Um, consulting for postgrad, sent me an email or sent um, admission.stu an email. I only have one minute left, so I'm gonna try and see. I have new, two new questions. So yeah, the prices for the dormitories are approximately 260 to 400 euros a month. And that's including internet, 
heat, water, and in most cases also um, electricity. So the A level high school biology. So the grades required are actually, we don't really look at the grades because you also do have to send in a motivational um, letter. And that's more important than the grades. So as long as you've passed all of your exams, that's actually fine with us. Um, the motivate again, if you have good grades, you might not be motivated and you might just want to drop out. However, if you are really motivated but don't have the best grades, you put in more energy and you probably um, stay for longer and actually get a better result at the end. So yeah, that's uh, that's why the grades aren't that important with us. That was um, the time that I had. I hope I answered most questions or all the questions. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining and uh, have fun. Hope to see you soon. Thank you so much uh, for this amazing presentation. I hope that everyone uh, had a lot of information from you about the uh, University of Southern Denmark. And if they have more questions, they will get in touch with you personally on your email. Uh, can you maybe leave your email address on the chat box if that's possible? Definitely. There you go. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye.